So in this example, we're going to show the procedure for handling problems that involve friction. So the example shown is we have a box of, of a height. Uh, the height isn't given, but we do have the distance to where the force P is applied horizontally. The box has a weight W and the box has a width of B for breadth. And the box is sat on a rough surface. So we're, we'd expect friction forces in between the box and the surface. And the procedure for analysis goes, we draw the free body diagram of the bodies of interest. And we're careful that the friction force points in the correct direction. So it opposes any impo impending motion. We determine the unknowns and we assume that if we're considering slip conditions, that the we have the limiting friction force fs equals mu s times n if tipping motion of a body is considered we're not going to be generating the full friction resistance so if we remind ourselves of our dry friction model we had a force and the force went up and up and up and then suddenly dipped and we had Fs, which was the limiting friction force, Fk for the friction force you generate when you're in motion. But up until you reach this limiting static friction force, then your force will not be completely up to this level of Fs. So on the x-axis here we had the force P that we're applying. And that P has to be in the direction along the interface. Okay, then we apply the equations of equilibrium, including any frictional components to solve the unknowns. So in this problem, we don't know whether the box is going to simply slide. So whether we'll just get a translation in the horizontal direction, like so, or whether the box will tip about this corner here. And so what we need to do is we evaluate both situations and which, see which situation would lead to the lowest force P for that to occur. So we have to solve the problem twice. First of all, then we're gonna assume that the box is slipping. And the first thing we do, as I said, is we draw the free body diagram for this situation. So for this situation, we have the weight of the box, W, we have the applied force, P, and for taking moments, very important that we know what the height, H, is that is applied. We will have a normal force, so the equal and opposite reaction of the box on the floor. And I'm gonna draw this off center from W. So that's the normal force N. And if we're thinking about slipping, we're expecting up until the point that it does slip, some friction force F that opposes the motion. So remember, we're considering the box moving to the right so the friction force goes in the opposite direction and therefore to the left so under the friction case this box kind of tries to lift up a little bit and this n will be a small distance away from the line of action of w this small distance i'm going to call x so we have our free body diagram for this case and because we're considering slip at the point of impending motion, just as the box is about to slip, we will generate on our model of dry friction, the absolute limit of friction available to us. So we have the friction force F, on our free body diagram will be equal to Fs, which equals mu S 
times the normal force m. So if we look at equilibrium now in the y direction, so some of the forces in the y direction, we can see that w must be equal to n. And if we apply the forces, some of the forces in the x direction to get equilibrium, we can see we have p pointing to the right, f pointing to the left, no other forces. So we can see that p must be equal to f. And if we need to work out what this distance x is where n is applied, we can take moments. So in this case, it's useful to take moments about A, and therefore W doesn't have any lever arm, F doesn't have any lever arm because it's going through this point, and we only need to consider the normal force N and the load P. So if we take moments about A, so we have moments about A, and let's get that free body diagram on the screen. Take a moment about A, we have N times X going in an anti-clockwise direction. And that must be equal to P times H going in the clockwise direction. At this moment, this is all we know about the system at the point of impending motion. And let's highlight those. Now we're going to go on and draw the free body diagram and assume that the box is tipping. We assume tipping and we'll draw, so we assume tipping. And let's just remind ourselves we have the rough surface and I'm going to exaggerate this slightly, but we have the bottom of the box and the bottom of the box is trying to twist around its corner like this. And as a result of that, this helps us draw the free body diagram for the box. So there we go. We have the weight W acting through the centroid of the box down. We have the applied load P, which is acting at the height H from the ground or the bottom of the box. And then we have the normal force now has to act right on this corner. It's the only point where the box is in contact with the ground. So the normal force has to act here. And also because this is the only point of contact, the friction force F must also be acting at this point. And I'll draw a line down. We have the point of action of W and we have a distance between that and where the normal force is acting at the center. And as this is this X now is equal to half of the width or breadth of the box, so B upon two. Finally, Let's label this point as A again. So W is going straight through A. F is going straight through A. So neither of those components have any lever arm if we take moments about this point. But N has the lever arm of B upon 2. And P has the lever arm of H. So let's write that down as an equation of equilibrium. So taking moments about the point A we have n times x going in the anti-clockwise direction, going in the clockwise direction then, so negative. We have p multiplied by h. And for equilibrium, that is equal to zero. And we're gonna rearrange this equation and we get that p equals nx divided by h. Now I'll put a green box around this. This isn't a formula you can apply to every problem as we see as we go on to further problems in this. But we have a formula here. And this is the tipping formula. 
that would get us a value of the load P required to get this box to tip. Earlier on, we've evaluated a value of the P required for it to slip. And for a given situation, we can then work out a value for P slip and a value for P tip. And whichever one turns out to be the smallest will be the limiting case for this problem. So in the notes, there is a, an example with numbers where you can set up this problem and solve and work out whether a box is tipping or slipping based on those numbers. And as you can imagine, whether it's tipping or slipping will really depend on whether the box is kind of wide or whether it's tall and skinny. So tall and skinny is more likely to tip and quite wide along the base is more likely to slip. Okay, now going through this example, we've generated these little equations for N, X and H and for the slip condition of a P equals F. These are not general formulas. These are just for this situation. As you can see, as you do further tutorial problems in the notes, that you cannot just apply these formulas. So there are some examples and tutorial problems later on in the notes. And so for example, we have a situation where we'll have a box. We might even have a 3D box, so you have to calculate the weight for yourself if we give you the mass density. I'll delete that because it's easy to draw in 3D. So again, you will have a weight W. Now it might be that as someone is pushing this box, that they're not pushing perfectly horizontal. And maybe they're pushing slightly downwards at an angle theta. So when you consider the, the case now for this, if you do and you want to calculate where N is, say for the slipping case, you need to consider the Y component of your force P acting there. So this formula here, P slip equals F, no longer holds true. So always draw a free body diagram for the situation that you are considering and don't rely on formulas like this and just throw the numbers in and hope you will get a problem right. So as with most things in statics, the idea that you think through the problem, draw the free body diagram and then analyze the situation is more important than just throwing numbers into formulas. So don't go around remembering these formulas for an exam or trying them in the tutorial problems or summative problems because for most situations where P will not be perfectly horizontal, these formulas do not apply.